Many years ago, when I did my master's degree in special education at McGill University in Montreal, uh, I was required to take a practicum, and I decided to do my practicum at the Learning Centre, which was a joint project of Montreal Children's Hospital and McGill University, working with adolescent learning disabled kids. We had an amazing person in charge of that program. Her name was Dr. Renee Stevens. And one of the things she had us do was take the kids out on a four-day camping trip. At the time, I didn't really understand why we were wasting these four valuable teaching days and why we were not teaching math and reading and all those other things that these kids had to get caught up on. Once we got out there, I understood what Renee was trying to, to show us, that these kids who are so hopeless and so helpless within the four walls of a classroom can have so many talents and so many abilities when you take them out into a different environment uh, that allows them to show you their skills and their strengths. That lesson stuck with me, and that was really what inspired me to get Camp Kodiak started. Camp Kodiak was established in 1991. Uh, it was first, it started off on a lease site out near Kingston, Ontario, in eastern Ontario. We moved to our present site near Parry Sound in 1998. We're currently on a huge site. We have 425 acres, four kilometers of waterfront on a nice quiet lake. Uh, we have 28 cabins and uh, every indoor and outdoor facility you can imagine. Our cabins are very different than the average camp cabin. They are all tongue and groove log cabins. They all have electricity, running water, bathrooms and showers right in the cabin. Every youngster has a plug by his bed. Every cabin is right on the lake with a large deck overlooking the lake. The reason we provide these, these facilities is that we don't want to have any unnecessary obstacles to success. We don't want some youngster wetting his bed and ruining a perfect day just because he was afraid to take a hundred yard hike to the outhouse. The majority of our kids at Camp Kodiak are kids with learning disabilities, ADHD, nonverbal learning disabilities, and high functioning Asperger syndrome. They vary in age from 6 to 18, and they come from all over the world. About 10% of our kids most years are kids who don't have any special challenges. They just come to camp because it's a good camp. We have a good ratio, we have lots and lots of activities, and their parents know that they're going to be well taken care of. Our staff are very different from the average camp staff. We don't hire high schoolers. Our staff are all either professional people, like teachers, social workers, or child and youth workers, or they're university students, college students, or recent graduates. Uh, they're dedicated individuals, and they do an amazing job with our kids. I think what we do as counselors is um, we act as the parents for that, either the four weeks or the, the full seven or the three weeks that the children are here. Uh, we're, their, we're their parents, so we're their best friends if they need somebody to vent to, uh, but we're the ones that they're gonna come come to and talk to and you know it's really good because a lot of us who have been here a long time we've seen the kids grow up from you know seven eight years old to you know young men and young women. Our counselors arrive at camp nine days before the kids. We have eight days of very intensive training where counselors are prepared for the groups they're going to be receiving. They're taught strategies on uh, teaching academics, on uh, managing behavior, on encouraging kids, on dealing with homesickness, all the things that we are likely to encounter with our children. Um, by the time the kids arrive at camp, our counselors are very, very well prepared to meet their needs. Remind 
thanker, everybody. We always should clap and cheer very loudly for all these marriage announcements for these really cool things that we do around here. But today, let's make it extra, extra special. Not only for the two I give, but for each and every one of them. And let's keep that up through the rest of the summer. So today, Camp Kodiak, I walked down to Paradise City, down to the water ski docks, and I looked out over the rock, and I saw my good friend Tori from Pine Two. Tori, can you stand up, please? Yeah, Tori. So Torrid was in the water with two skis on. His knees were bent, his head was up, his arms were straight. The first time, he didn't quite make it. So we gave him a little coaching. And the second time, he popped right up and went right around the lake. So ladies and gentlemen, give up for my friend Torrid. <laughs> of Frisbee that ever has happened here at Camp Kodiak. There was passing, there was teamwork, it was absolutely amazing. So ladies and gentlemen of Camp Kodiak, give it up for the boys and girls. I am a teacher during the year and this is a really great experience for me to work work with kids that I don't usually work with in the classroom. Um, I, I work in a mainstream classroom but here I get to work with, with kids who have some problems but it's really great to see them overcome. We have a two to one ratio around camp and within the cabin it's a three to one, one ratio. So with this uh, we're able to give every camper uh, the special attention that they need and uh, anyone who may need a little extra help or extra hands, with all the staff we have on site, we're able to ensure everyone has the best time they can at camp. I love to see um, all the kids here that are actually succeeding at things. A lot of them at home, they don't have the easiest time doing sports and making social interactions with their peers. Uh, it's great to see them having fun and interacting and being really successful. I also find that I like um, just hanging out with them, they're really great people and it's really great to have a chance to get to know a lot of them. When you're here you see the campers grow so much from where they, from they start when they get here to when they leave. They build friendships, they work on uh, different skills and that kind of thing and there's so many different activities that we do at camp that enhance those skills. You know, just by playing softball or playing soccer, they learn social skills and are able to build friendships that they can take home. This is my home for July and August. And every year I meet the most amazing young people I've ever come across in my life. They overcome so many challenges and they just inspire me every year and that's why I come back. I find the biggest thing uh, that I've noticed for myself and also for campers is that at first I, was, I thought, thought it was kind of weird because it's just the kids are just having a normal camp experience. But that's exactly what it's for is that these kids are able to have a normal camp experience and they don't have to hide who they are at all. Is, um, it's the biggest thing I've got from it, and I hope the other kids do, is understanding how to think about your LD, your uh, learning disability, is that it's an element of you, and it's prominent, but it doesn't define you in any way, and that's just, you learn and you grow with it. I originally wanted to come to Camp Kodiak because I have a learning disability, and I wanted to pay it forward because I also want to be a teacher, so I thought this would be a great place to get experience. What I wasn't prepared for was how much the kids would help me and how much the staff would help me. Um, they call Kodiak a place to grow. It's just as true for the staff it is for the campers. I have learned so much from them and I see so much of them, what I was like as a kid and it just, it, it, I'm so proud of them when they do accomplish something because I know how hard it is. Like when they finally get up that rock wall or finally get in the lake to participate for a swim instructor. I just want to cry sometimes because they're so amazing. You easily connect to the staff here. Um, I mean, maybe not the first week that you're here, you connect to them, but as you get to know each other in your cabin, you warm up to people. Um, all staff members are there to help you with anything, and they will tell you that if you are going through a problem, they will come up to you and they will ask, 
are you okay? Do you need to talk? And it's like, yeah, I need to talk about something. So you can talk, and just by talking, you get that bond right then and there, and you immediately know that you can trust that counselor. We structure everything we do here to ensure that kids will succeed, whether it's social, artistic, athletic, and we celebrate those successes every step of the way. Many of our kids are totally blown away by competition. We teach many competitive sports. You know, we teach tennis and soccer and basketball and volleyball and all of those, those sports, but we don't even keep track of scores. We're trying to teach kids how to have fun with sports. We're trying to teach them skills that will keep them active and healthy. Uh, if at the end of a soccer game, a camper asks, what was the score? Every counselor in camp will give them exactly the same answer. Did you have fun? Yeah, I had fun. Well, then you won. It's definitely fun. There's a lot of stuff to do around here. There's plenty of water sports, sports, um, and recreational activities. It's definitely fun. Um, that's kind of one of the reasons I, that I keep coming back. Everything I do here, I have fun doing. The people, the experiences, the laughter, the fun. Like I've learned to water ski, well, wakeboard, and kneeboard and it's really fun and you have faults but you know you get back up and you try again. I've been here for five years and I've always thought it was an amazing place. Um, it's always been fun um, because you always they always try and include you in everything. Yeah it's really fun. Uh, there are like many activities that I like. I love to be on the water. I love water world. Um, I really love like all performances. I, I love to dance, I love to act, I love to sing. I love like many, many things here. I like all the activities, including, I'll tell you why I like high ropes, because it's so fun, climbing guy. The funnest thing I love to do here is, um, is probably rock climbing and drama. The activities are incredible here. Um, even though you're with your cabin a lot and you don't get to hang out with like all your friends all the time in different cabins, just the water skiing, the horseback riding, the um, just everything here is incredible. Baseball, you just have so much fun encouraging your friends to uh, try new things and do different activities, and it's incredible. I love it. There's like no other way to describe it. It's so much fun here. for an academic tutoring program and it's one hour in the morning right after breakfast on Monday through Friday. About half of our campers parents decide to enroll them in the tutoring aspect of the program so they spend that one hour a day reviewing, reading, writing, mathematics and we get information from the campers uh, school teachers to find out what they could benefit reviewing over the summer. And it's a very relaxed atmosphere, they're in small groups working in pairs or trios uh, with counselors assisting them. And they're at the picnic tables under the trees, and it's a very relaxed kind of place to learn. And at the end of the hour, it's done, and they go on with their day. The other half of our kids do something we call option two, and that's an electives portion. And so at that time during the day, they do, you know, they learn martial arts, or they might be doing stained glass, they might be learning how to do pottery, or working on a camp newspaper, or doing vocal music, or science experiments. And again, they do that um, for one hour in the morning, and at the end of that, they join their cabins, and the cabins go on with the rest of their day. The most important things we're working on here at Camp Kodiak are helping kids understand that they have lots and lots of abilities that they don't even know they have, uh, building confidence, teaching social skills, and just having fun and being a kid. Whether it's a social success, the success of trying something new that they've never done before and being able to actually do it, that sense of accomplishment, I think that's what generates the fun. And just the sense of family as well. You 
you come your first year and you might not know anyone and you leave with a whole new family and I think that's really special. I found out about Camp Kodiak about 10 years ago on the web actually. My oldest boy was about the age where I wanted him to experience camp, but I knew I needed to find a really special spot for him. So I spent a lot of time on the web and uh, came across Camp Kodiak's website and was pretty much sold pretty quickly with their vision and their mandate, their ideas. I could tell that they, they got it, they understood what I was looking for. The word awesome always comes up. so. Uh... They, they think this is a pretty special spot. You know, it's good for us too. It's good for Kathy and I to come here and, uh, you know, see them so excited, meet their new friends, and, and, you know, they converse with them through the year and everything. So it's it's just a just an all-around good experience. And it lasts beyond, when, beyond today when camp's over. You know, it goes throughout the year too, and then the anticipation starts building up again in anticipation of next year's experience. Certainly the first few years I can remember, uh, my boys obviously were younger, so there's that piece about, oh, how are they doing? Are they homesick? But you know, as the years have gone through each year, it's, I just, I am so reassured that everything is perfectly fine. Um, just because I can tell from their letters that they're happy, things are going well, they're making new friends, they're experiencing new adventures, they're learning new sports. So it's just, I, I am thrilled with Camp Clo and Club Kodiak both. We've had the experience of experience both of them. And both of them, it's just nothing but kudos to Dave and his, and his team. Some kids cry when they go to camp, our kids cry when they go home. <laughs> so exactly. uh, they love it so much and they look forward to it so much every year. They've uh, gathered around themselves a group of very good friends, some of which they stay in touch with throughout the year. Uh, they write to their friends and they again feel part of something and the gains that they have during the summer carry on throughout the academic year, the school year. I would, yeah, I'd have to say some of Shane's closest friends are kids he's met here mm -hmm. at Kodiak. I agree. The issues weren't so much academic for Shane, uh, but rather uh, social and that's what we were looking for from the camp and yeah. boy that's what we found in the camp. Exactly. When, you know, they always say, what are your goals? I said, have a great time. That was really the key for us, happy kids. And this is a, a real important, integral part of their lives. They don't see camp as this seven-week time span and they come home. <laughs> it's part of who they are and what they do. It may be a sh short time part of what they are and what they do, but it's helped them become who they are. When I was a kid, I went to camp. They weren't as good as this and uh, it's, it's a beautiful place. The staff is completely responsible. There isn't a second that we're worried about anything with the kids. We know they're having a good time and they're well looked after. So they come back better people than when we dropped them off. And that's the main thing. Uh, the first year Lita was here, she cried when we picked her up. <laughs> uh, she didn't want to come home. Once Lita had um, a quite a serious medical misadventure while she was here, it was beautifully handled. and. Um, she asked that we not be told for fear we would come and get her. And then uh, she, was in the, she was to stay in the nursing office overnight. And when she figured out she wasn't uh, going to be allowed back to her cabin, she got very sad. And she started to cry about, I want to go home. And I think it was Donna said to her, oh honey, don't cry, don't cry. We'll call your mother. <laughs> At which point she said, don't call my mother. I'll be fine, I'll stop crying. I don't want to go home, home. I want to go back to my cabin to be with my girls. So what, what, what do they express to us? A desire to be here full time. We should go away, send checks, send care packages. This is the end of the ninth season for both of my sons. And each year I can continue to see growth. So I remember clearly the first year I picked them up, especially my oldest son. It was his vocabulary that stuck out. All of a sudden he was expressing himself more thoroughly, more completely, and with words I had never heard him say before. And it just popped out immediately on our ride home from camp. And that would be the one that sticks in my mind the most, is just the way he could express himself with emotion as well. So there was certainly a passion for what he was saying. This is awesome. It's so positive, and Dave is, uh, Dave is just so, uh, uh, understanding and, and um, he just makes it a good experience. I will guarantee you that as we leave here today we won't be out Kodiak Road and both of them will be reassuring themselves by saying to me we're coming back next year right mom 
no doubt in my mind, it happens every year. And they always want a picture of the sign as we leave with them in front. And that picture goes up on both of their desks and it's a memory. And about, about January, February, they'll start looking at the website. They have a countdown there and they'll start looking at that. So those two things sum it all up. They just are passionate about being here and they feel great about being here. I thought Shane, from the minute he came here, uh, exhibited more uh, uh, attentiveness, uh, consideration. He felt wanted, he felt loved, he felt part of, not separate from, and that was evident from the first letter of the first week of the first year. So uh, very quickly he became more self-confident. He felt that he could be part of a group, which was somewhat excluded from him prior to that. So the changes were immediate and very positive. Yeah, I think with the esteem and just the, so, the, the social gains were huge. Mm -hmm. And we just didn't see that during the academic year as much, whether there's other pressures, but definitely that. I think the kids come out of camp, like every kid that comes out of camp anywhere in the world, that they've had fun, they're playing with other kids, they're in the outdoors, they're swimming, they're expanding their talents and their capabilities. <clears throat> They're pumped up and ready to go, and they just love it. In a nutshell, if it's good for them, it's good for us. We can actually have a little bit of fun and relax by ourselves and not worry. And to know that they have that, this place, this, this beautiful place to come back to with people they know from year to year, with, with friends that they, they talk about all year, it's, it's just a, it's a great environment for them. But Lita, we see a, a real a difference. She is a more independent child, and it gives us great hope for the future that she can, in fact, at some point live, if not independently, in a, in a lightly supported environment. And that certainly wasn't anything we were led to believe we could expect. Yeah, camp, camp gives her the, the freedom to spread her wings in a, in a protected environment, but without being overbearing. So she can really take advantage. It provides all the opportunities for her to develop her leadership qualities and to develop all the relationships and to really shine. At other camps, she couldn't, she couldn't fit in. She just couldn't. And there wasn't a way for them to, to help her fit in. And so here she's found a, a home with friends and, uh, and the desire to come back and the knowledge that she'll be well taken care of. And, and so it's just, it really, uh, what, what Dave does here is just a miracle for all of us. And we're grateful. In 2002, my older brother David, uh, who has Asperger's syndrome, um, was looking into camps online. My mom really didn't even know about it. Uh, and somehow or another, he came across Camp Kodiak. And he told my mom, he's like, Mom, I, uh, I, I found this camp and I was just interested. And my brother wasn't really the adventurous type. So my mom was like, oh, okay. Uh, she looked into it. They actually had a visit the summer of 2002. Uh, and my brother fell in love with the camp. She signed David up for seven weeks for 2003, shipped him off, uh, and she said to me, Joseph, do you want to go? And I was hesitant at first. I was younger than he was. I was 10, he was 12. But I thought about it, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll try, but I don't want to do seven weeks. So I actually only went for second session. I went for three weeks, and we both fell in love with the camp. It was amazing. This is now my 10th year. Uh, David stopped coming in 2007, and then he started coming in 2008. If I had to choose one of three places to be, it'd probably be my house, my school, or camp. It's one of my favorite places ever. I mean, I've been only coming for five years, but I came every year for Visitor's Day and I loved it. I'd always, you know, go over to my brother's friends and always, you know, say hi to them, and I'd love it, so eventually I just was crazy about going. And I fell in love with it, I mean, before I was even a camper. Well, I definitely see a change in myself quite a bit, and mostly my parents when I come back. After camp, when I go home, I feel a lot more confident than before camp. 
And honestly, being here, I know I met meet a lot of people, and I realize I'm not the only one. Also, here, you also learn how to work as a group, and yet stand in individuals. Yeah, I have I have more confidence now because most of all, I know here that n nobody like makes fun of you or uh, makes fun of what you believe in, what you um, what you love. It's it, everybody's just so nice, so so kind. I do see a change in myself. Um, not not to say that like back home, like I'm cl like clo closed off, but when I come here, I really open up and become the person that I guess you really are. My first year, I came and I wasn't really confident, I didn't like to try new things. I mean, my brother always encouraged me to do things at home, and I'd always try it, but I'd be scared at first, and when I came back from my first year, I mean, everything changed. I used to go out from you know, spending a lot of time with my parents to spending a lot of time by myself and then making new friends, even at school. And I, I was always a sociable kid. Like whenever we went to the beach or something, I always hang out with other kids that I didn't even know. But then I start to make actual relationships with other people. I start having friends, having you know daily things where I do with other people, and I tried new things. I was didn't didn't even hesitate to do things, and it was a lot better. David and I were uh, the more awkward. Uh, slightly less confident and sociable brothers. Michael was always the social butterfly, but uh, I really never had a solid group of friends at home. Uh, and I, I mean, it, there was a stretch in my life probably from nine to 15, 14, where I mean, my confidence was really low, my self-esteem was really low. Uh, I actually have uh, a skin condition called eczema and it really impacted my life during that period to a point where like I, just didn't like myself and every time I came to camp it was just I, I was filled with confidence I was happy and everywhere I went I, I I just had a smile on my face I would participate in activities that I would never do at home speak to people that I didn't even know and uh, a lot of that rubbed off and and came back with me into it to New York to where I started making friends at school you know uh, started hanging out with people doing things after school extracurriculars and I, I attribute most of that to camp. I see a change in myself when I'm here a whole lot, like a really big change. Um, I feel more free in a way. Um, I feel more open. Um, I feel like I can talk to anybody about anything. Um, it's comfortable here. Every year I go home and I feel like a totally different person. I feel happier. I'm more open with everyone, um, friends, family. I don't feel upset with myself uh, like I used to. Um, it's just a great experience here. It changes you a whole lot. It is like paradise.
when I look around this camp, uh, I'm reminded that uh, many years ago I was one of these kids. I was in the eighth grade three times, I was in the ninth grade twice before my parents finally let me quit school. I went out to work, went back to school at night, did my high school at night, did my undergraduate degree at night, did my master's degree at night, and then went to teacher's college for a year. And um, if I made it, these kids can make it. <laughs>